Hey guys, in today's video, we'll be going over the formation of Hadley cells, Farrell cells, and Polar cells, and their relationship to trade winds and Coriolis forces. Before we begin, we need to understand why warm air molecules are less dense than cool air molecules. Let's take this back to thermodynamics. Heat gives air molecules an increase of energy that puts them in a more disordered state. As a result, warm air molecules takes up more space than cool air molecules. I like to think of warm air molecules as more spaced out. It's important to remember that air molecules, whether warm or cool, have the same amount of mass. So, for instance, if we had three warm air molecules, it would have the same mass as three cool air molecules. So, if we have two cups, one with warm air and one with cool air, which one do you think will weigh more? Let's use cotton balls to represent our air molecule. For our warm air molecules, they will be stretched out to represent the disordered state heat puts air molecules in. As you can see, we were able to fit one, two, fourteen, fifteen air molecules in the cool air cup, while we were only able to fit one, two, seven air molecules in the warm air cup. We will incorporate this information when talking about the formation of Hadley cells. Next, we need to talk about the different forms of water. When water is in its vaporous form, it requires a lot of energy to maintain that state. Without a constant energy source, vaporous water molecules will gradually lose energy to its environment and phase change from a gas to a liquid. The result is condensation. Finally, it's important to know that air molecules will naturally flow from an area of high pressure to an area of low pressure. Now we'll go over the formation of a Hadley cell. Feel free to pause the video and write down the following steps. We will start at the equator. The equator has the highest amount of solar heating from the sun. This causes hot air along with moisture to rise to the troposphere. Remember that warm air is less dense and therefore more compliant to rise up. As those air molecules begin to arise, the area that they initially occupied becomes vacant and creates an area of low pressure. At the troposphere, the air molecules are without a constant source of energy to maintain their gaseous state, and phase change from a gas to a liquid, producing rain. Once the moisture has condensed, our air particles will begin to move towards the poles at high altitudes. Notice, our air particles cannot move back down because warm air is being pushed upwards, and therefore our air particles have to move towards the poles. Next, as our air molecules continue to move towards the poles, they also begin to cool down. Remember how we discussed that cool air molecules are more dense than warm air molecules. Well, at around 30 degrees latitude, our air molecules will begin to sink downwards. This area now has an increased number of air molecules since additional air molecules have accumulated in this location. As a result, this area is now an area of high pressure. Air molecules like to naturally flow from an area of high pressure to an area of low pressure. And as such, our air molecules will move from 30 degrees latitude and return back to the equator and replace the air molecules that were initially lost at that location. When these winds return and converge at the equator, they create the intertropical conversion zone, or the ITCZ. This movement of air molecules from 30 degrees latitude to the equator in combination with Coriolis forces subsequently creates our northeast and southeast trade winds. This is especially evident when we view these trade winds from a global perspective. Trade winds travel from east to west, converging back at the equator. Pharrell cells are created in a similar manner. In addition to air molecules moving from 30 degrees latitude to the equator, they can also move from 30 degrees latitude to 60 degrees latitude. This is a result of air rising at 60 degrees latitude, creating an area of low pressure. Now again, 
Air likes to move from an area of high pressure to an area of low pressure, or in this case, from 30 degrees latitude to 60 degrees latitude. This air movement creates our prevailing westerlies. Now, if we viewed these winds from a global perspective, they would move from west to east. This makes sense since these winds are moving away from the equator and towards the poles. Now at 60 degrees latitude, air rises and can either return to 30 degrees latitude or travel to 90 degrees latitude. Air that moves to 90 degrees latitude are called our polar cells. Air begins to cool as it reaches 90 degrees latitude and eventually begins to sink. This creates an area of high pressure, and similar to our other wind cells, air likes to move from an area of high pressure to an area of low pressure. So wind's going to travel from 90 degrees latitude to 60 degrees latitude, creating our polar easterlies. If we viewed these winds from a global perspective, we would see them travel from east to west. And that covers our three different types of wind cells. Thanks for watching. The Teaching Center, UF's Learning Resource Center.